Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Lou Ayers in Smilin' Through on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars and outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our version of one of the most successful Broadway plays of all time, Smiling Through by Alan L. Martin, which is a pseudonym for a collaboration between a fine writer, Miss Jane Murphy, and that distinguished actress, Miss Jane Cowell. The story of Smiling Through in one form or another has warmed the hearts of millions throughout several generations. You know, there's one quality which all extremely popular stories have, quite apart from any other merits, and that is sincerity. Smiling Through has this to the full. And no story, I believe, could be more appropriate to our thoughts on the festival of St. Valentine, which we're approaching. Tonight, we're happy to have in the starring role of Smiling Through, the celebrated actor, Lou Ayers. And now, Frank Goss, have you a few words about Hallmark? There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar, for birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, that says you cared enough to send the very best. And now our Hallmark Playhouse presents Smiling Through, starring Mr. Lou Ayers. <laughs> Our play, Smiling Through, opens in a beautiful English garden where John Carteret and his next-door neighbor and lifelong friend, Dr. Owen Harding, are seated at a small table playing dominoes. Dr. Owen has finally selected a domino. He plays it and looks up triumphantly, only to find his opponent asleep. So he picks up his cane and nudges John with it. Hmm? Hmm? What's the matter? Oh, oh my turn. This is a devil of an exciting game of dominoes with you going to sleep after every play. Sorry, Owen. Where's Kathleen? She's about someplace. Sometimes it's very difficult to keep track of my niece. I, uh, I saw her out walking yesterday with uh, Kenneth Wayne. Kenneth Wayne? Don't know why he couldn't have stayed in America with his mother's people. I was finished with the Waynes years ago. Well, the subject may be reopened in spite of you, John, and why not? After all, it's only natural the boy should come back to look after his father's estate. And I think Kathleen is very fond of him, very fond indeed. Why, you old fool, Kathleen wouldn't look at a Wayne. She knows how I feel about him. Does she know why? No, but she'll never disobey me. Won't she? <laughs> She's Irish, John. I've raised her as my own. John, 30 years is a long time to hold a hatred. Neither the boy nor Kathleen knows what happened. And if they did, you think a deed already 30 years past could stop them from being in love? In love? Kathleen couldn't love Wayne. She's not in love with him, I tell you. She's not in love with him. <laughs> Kathleen, I think you must be the most beautiful girl in the world. Well, Faith, no. If that's what you're thinking, I'll never be the one to disillusion you, Kenneth Wayne. Sun's going down. I, I suppose we'd better be walking toward home. Yes, I suppose we should. Oh, Kathleen, I'm going to miss you. Miss me? I'll be leaving Dunstable sometime this week. Oh? I have to go home to America. Oh, to get married or something? <laughs> if I meant to get married, 
I wouldn't be going away to do it. Dunstable would be good enough for me. Oh, well, of course, there's many a good-looking girl in Dunstable. But if you're thinking of proposing to any of them, I'll tell you my idea of a proposal. If you're interested. Oh, I'm very interested. Well, choosing a suitable sort of romantic place. In a garden or on a country road like this. The young man should say, it has long been my intention to ask a question of you. And I would say, dear me, how interesting. What can it be? And then he should say, in a tone which trembled with the force of his feelings, Kathleen, may I call you Kathleen? <laughs> That's how a proper proposal should start. Oh, I, I see. It has long been my intention. Kathleen? Kathleen! Oh, what are you doing out here in the road? Good evening, Mr. Carteret. Kathleen, go in the house. Uncle John! Mr. Wayne, I'm sorry to see me in hospital. But will you please understand clearly, once and for all, that you are not welcome here? Uncle John! Mr. Carteret, I'm in love with Kathleen. And I hope someday to ask her to marry me. Wayne, there can be no question of marriage between you and Kathleen, now or ever. We'll kindly leave the premises. <laughs> Kathleen, <laughs> Kathleen, child, what are you doing out here alone in the garden at this hour? Oh, it's late. You should have been in bed long ago. Oh, there, there, child, don't carry on. So. I love him. What right do you have to interfere because you didn't like his father? <laughs> Kathleen, I think it's time you knew the truth about the man whose son you say you love. Perhaps I should have told you long ago, but I didn't dream you would ever meet, much less think you could love a Wayne. Am I disturbing something, John? I heard your voices from my porch. No, and I'm glad you came over. I'm going to tell Kathleen what happened in this garden 30 years ago. Kathleen, my dear, 30 years ago, on the 18th of June, this old house was a hubbub of excitement. It was a lovely summer night, much like this one, wasn't it, Owen? Yes, the garden was in full bloom. And there were Chinese lanterns around, if I remember correctly. Yes, of course, the Chinese lanterns. It was June 18th, the night Moon Yin and I were to be married. She had arrived from Ireland that very day with her sister Mary. Uh, your mother, my dear. Oh, Uncle John. I had a sentimental wish to be married in the home of my father and my father's father. Moon Yin indulged me in it. I... Remember the long twilight fading into darkness and the old house lit by a thousand candles. There were snatches of laughter, gay chatter floating out into the garden. As someone was playing a harp. And the melody was one that I will carry in my heart forever. It was a song she had learned in Ireland. A love song. Oh, clearly it all comes back. There was an hour yet before the ceremony, and suddenly there was a violent ring at the gate bell. In the name of all that's holy, stop jangling that bell. I'm coming. Oh, oh, it's you, Owen. What the deuce are you doing with this gate locked when there's a wedding going on? That's to keep out unwelcome guests. Why haven't you got your tie tie? I, I couldn't manage it. Nerves, I guess. Oh, what are you nervous about? You aren't getting married. Here, let me tie it. If I live through this, I swear I will never go near another wedding again as long as I live. And there's no use ever asking me to be messed man again, either. I wasn't <laughs> intending to ask you again. Oh. oh, good heavens. Good heavens, I've lost it. Oh, I knew something would happen. Lost what? The ring. The ring? Now, what am I going to do? What the devil do you mean getting married anyhow? There's the ring on your hand. On what? On your little finger. And what the devil do you mean wearing Moon Yin's ring? Put it in your waistcoat pocket. It won't stay there. It... Oh, thunderation. Now what? It slipped down into the lining of my pocket. Must be a hole there someplace, but I'll find it. Now, don't get rattled, John. Yeah. Be calm. Keep collected. I'll find it. I'll find it. Uh, there. 
Oh, uh, John, I, I knew I had something to tell you. I passed the inn on my way here, and Jeremiah Wayne was in there, drinking more than was good for him and talking about Mooneen again. Wayne has a strange, bitter nature. Wayne is a no-good, hot I know, I know, John. He was in an ugly mood and making some pretty wild threats. I see. Well, that kind of man usually takes it out in talking. There isn't much he can do now. Now, oh, there's some more guests arriving. Come on, let's go in the study and fish out that wedding ring. Ellen, will you answer the bell? Yes, Mr. John, right away, sir. Oh, Dr. Owen and I are going in the study. Yes, sir. Hello, Ellen. Oh, it's you, Mr. Wayne. Who is it you want, sir? We're very busy just now. I want to come in, and I want to kiss the bride. I'm sorry, I can't admit you. Get out of the way, Ellen. I tell you, I've come to kiss the bride. Oh, right, Ellen. Jeremiah. It was nice of you to come around. I knew you'd never let me get married without wishing me well. Oh, Moonyan. Moonyan, you're not going to marry him. Tell me it isn't true. You mustn't begin this all over again. Oh, it's a dog's life I'd be leading you, not loving you. And you don't deserve that. Moonyan, oh, Moonyan. Goodbye, Jeremiah. God keep you. I came for a kiss from the bride. All right. You shall have it. Oh, Moonyan. Now, please. All right. I'll go. Well, I must say some people have the nerve. They do. Oh, Ellen, I forgot you were here. I wasn't going to leave you alone with the likes of him. Moonyan, I thought I heard you out here. Oh, who were you talking to? I was just saying goodbye to an old friend, John. How beautiful you are in that wedding dress. How very beautiful. Oh, you're not supposed to be looking at me until the ceremony. It's bad luck. Not for you and me. For you and me, tonight is the beginning of the world, and everything's good about it, especially our luck. Oh, John, my darling. My darling. My darling. In a moment, James Hilton will return to present the second act of Smilin' Through, starring Mr. Lou Ayers. On a winter's day in the year 1415, a young man sits in the Tower of London, a prisoner in a foreign land. This is Charles, Duke of Orleans, nobleman, poet, a commander of the French forces defeated by the English at Argencourt. His thoughts are now of home, and he imagines how pleased his duchess will be with what he is about to send her. What art has gone into its creation... What skill into the lettering of the verse, his verse. Charles, Duke of Orléans, nods with approval, signals to a messenger, and to his lady far away he sends a valentine, a valentine that is preserved to this day in the British Museum. Valentines play an even more important part in people's lives now than in the long ago. Not only do we send a valentine to the one person who is dearest to us, we like to send these reminders of our affection to all those we care for. And that is why, at the friendly store where Hallmark greeting cards are sold, you find so many different Hallmark Valentines. Valentines that say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it, to each of your friends and loved ones. And on the back of every one is the Hallmark that says, you cared enough to send the very best. Now, back to James Hilton and the second act of Smilin' Through, starring Mr. Lou Ayers. As we continue the story of Smilin' Through... We find John Carteret still in the garden with Dr. Owen and Kathleen, recounting the memories of his romance with Monine Clare. I 
grave. I wish you could have seen Monine that night in her wedding dress. She was lovely. Lovelier than any woman had been before or would be again. I held her in my arms. Close to me. Close to me. Oh, John, hold me close. Don't let me go. I feel safe in your arms. I'm so happy. So happy. What are you thinking? Hmm? About the day we met. Oh. I looked at you and my heart stopped for I don't know how long. And I said to myself, there she is. There's the girl I've been waiting for. I'd know her anywhere. What did you think? I thought what an overbearing, arrogant young man. I don't think much of him. Well, if that's the case, I'm going straight in the house and stop the wedding. I take it back. <laughs> I must have thought I found my happiness now. Because that's what I've been thinking ever since. Darling, what did we talk about anyhow? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. I said, I beg your pardon, but does Jessica Wayne live here? Oh, when I said, no, she lives about a mile up the road. And you said... I said... No, 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 don't tell me. I remember now. You said, oh, dear, I've come all the way from Bali Shannon to see her, and there was no one at the station to meet me, and... And I've walked all the way here. I didn't say it like that. Just exactly, and you puffed a little. Uh, it was hot. <laughs> so I had you come in and rest in this garden. And I drove you up to the Waynes myself. And while we were driving, you said, are you married or engaged or in love with anybody? And you said no. So I said, then you're going to marry me. And I said, I might. <laughs> and here we are. Oh, John, do you suppose anyone else in the world ever felt like this before? Even if I died, I think I'd find my way back to you. I'd be that lonely for you. Darling. Well, isn't this a pretty picture? Jeremiah. Wayne, what do you want? Take your hands off her. Oh, Jeremiah, you said you'd go. I couldn't, Moonine. I've been out here all the time. I couldn't stand listening to any more. Go in the house, Moonine. I want to talk to Carteret alone. Jeremiah, you promised Get her me. away, will you, Carteret? Go on, Moonine. I won't leave you. Please do as I ask, Moonine. Not until I know what he wants. If you've come to create a disturbance at the wedding... There isn't going to be any wedding. Threats like that won't do you any good, Wayne. I wasn't able to keep you from winning her. But by all that's holy, I can keep you from marrying her. You fool, put that gun away. No, no, John. Moonine, Moonine. I never meant that. But dear God, I never meant to hurt her. Owen, Owen. Owen, somebody called Dr. Owen. John, what's happened? It was Wayne, he shot at me and Moonine stepped in front of me. Owen. What is it, John? What is it? Oh, oh John. He's killed. He's killed. Oh, Here, let me get to her, John. Ellen, oh, send yes. some of them after Wayne. Head him off. Don't let him get away. Yes. John, <laughs> lie still, Moonin. Lie still. Owen's here, darling. He knows what to do. He'll take care of you. Honey, I said not even death. That's funny when you think of it. Like a warning. Oh, and if you ever were my friend, help her now. John, I... I'm afraid there's... Nothing. No. Oh, and no, that isn't possible. That can't happen. John. John. I love you. I will love you forever. Moon. John, where's my ring? My wedding ring. Here it is, John. Put it on my finger. Yes, dear. There's a little. Green gate. At whose trellis I wait. I'll be there waiting. Waiting. Moonin. Moonin. A melody on a heart. Memory of voices and Chinese lanterns. Sometimes the smallest pieces of a memory hurt the most of all. 
I gathered together all the things and I, I put them all away. And then I sat here where I'm sitting now and after a while, as time passed, I began to feel that somehow she was close by. And when you came to me, Kathleen, I felt that you were a gift from her. Uncle dear, if you could love like that through the years and after the years and after death itself, how is it you can be so hard about me and my poor little love story? Because you're the stock of my Munin herself. And his is the blood of the Waynes, and you don't belong together. Surely you see that now. I won't, I won't. You're an obstinate old man, John Cartridge. And I'm not going to listen to you. You have no right to inflict your quarrels and your anger and your grief on me. This is our lifetime, not yours. And I'm not going to let you spoil it. I'm going to get out of this house. And I'm never coming back as long as I live. Good night, John. Owen. Good night. <laughs> I'd find you still out here in the garden. What are you going to do, sit here until pneumonia sets in? I thought you went home angry. Well, I thought better of it. I've been sitting here trying to think things out. Owen, am I an obstinate old man? Yes. Huh? Things change, people change. Maybe I have lived too much in the past. Would you? Would you know where to find Jeremiah Wayne's son? Why, I, I suppose at the Wayne house. Will you come with me? I want to talk to him. Kathleen said I had no right to inflict my quarrels and grief on them, Owen. I, I think she's right. I think I must apologize to Kenneth Wayne. <laughs> Ken, speak your piece. Go on, boy. If you'd both keep still, I think we could manage all right. Go on, Ken. Uh, let me see now. How to begin? It has uh, long been my intention. Oh. oh, yes. Darling, it it has long been my intention to ask a question of you. Tell me how interesting. What can it be? Kathleen. May I call you Kathleen? Hey, that's all she taught me. Now what do I say? Well, what does he say, John? You're the only one around here that's ever proposed to oh, anyone. He says, Kathleen, I'm not half worthy of you, but I'll try very hard to make you happy. I will try very hard, Kathleen. And then he says... I think I can carry on from here on my own, Mr. Carteret. Kathleen, my darling, will you marry me? Dear me, how sudden. Sudden? 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 Oh, but even though it is sudden, seeing as how that's the way you feel about things, it gives me much pleasure to accept your offer. Now we've gotten someplace. John, that was a fine thing you did tonight. And believe me, I... I know what it cost you. We'll have the wedding here in this garden. It will wipe out the stain. You care for a game of dominoes? No, no, I'm tired. I think I'll just sit here for a little while, then I'll turn in. Good night, Owen. Good night, John. I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Hello, John. Moonjean? Moonjean? Yes, John. Moonjean, you've come back to me. I've come back for you. We're together again. Together? Yes. Don't you see me, John? But I... Yes, yes. Why, Moonjean, you're in your wedding dress. Of course. Just as you were that night. And as beautiful and fresh and young as if 30 years were only a day. Oh, but, but I'm old. Old and very tired. Old? Whatever in the world are you talking about? You're straight and tall as a poppy. You see me like that? I see you like that. That's a miracle. Love is a miracle. Oh, 
Come, my darling. Let me take your arm. We'll walk through the gate together. But I, I don't understand. Look. There in the chair. Where you were sitting. Well, I'm still there. Yes. Then this is... This is what they call dying. Yes, John. I always wondered what there would be at the end of the road for me. But I always prayed that it would be you. Come, my darling. Let me take your arm. For this is how our love story ends and begins. You and I together, smiling through the years. James Hilton and Lou Ayers will return in a moment. But now I'd like to remind you that Valentine's Day is only four days off, so you'd better hurry if you want to remember those special friends of yours. It just wouldn't be a real Valentine if you didn't express your thoughtfulness in the traditional way, a card with an expression of your affection, a Hallmark Valentine that's in the true spirit of the day. So visit the friendly store where Hallmark greeting cards are sold. Ask to see the beautiful Hallmark cards that will carry your Valentine wish to the ones you love. Now here again is James Hilton. Thank you, Lou Ayers, for bringing us such a fine performance of a story that fits this particular season so very well. All of us here in the Hallmark Playhouse enjoyed it very much. Well, thank you, Mr. Hilton. Smiling Through is one of those wonderful love stories that seem to get better each time they're told. I don't suppose that's very strange, since love itself seems to have a very long record of success. That's true. It seems to go on getting more and more popular. <laughs> I think you chose very well in selecting Smiling Through for your Valentine story, and I enjoyed doing it. Wouldn't it be a nice thing to contemplate if we could look forward to a time when, when love would completely conquer hate and misunderstanding, as it did in tonight's story? Well, it's never too late to start, you know. <laughs> that's true. The season is at hand. Valentine's Day certainly gives every one of us an opportunity to express our affections in some special manner without, without being self-conscious about it. To me, that seems to be a, a pretty good idea. All of us feel a particular fondness for many who are close to us, but somehow we never get around to letting them know it. And then Valentine's Day comes around and we have an excuse for overcoming our natural shyness and we can dare to express ourselves a little more directly, and I think it's a very fine institution. Mr. Hilton, I imagine anyone who feels that he wants to send a, a message of affection to someone he knows could find a, a hallmark card that would express the proper sentiments, couldn't he? I'm certain he could. Then I'd like to suggest that we make a special point of trying to make people happy by spreading cheer and affection around, and the idea may grow. <laughs> Thank you for asking me here tonight. Well, yours was a pretty good idea, Louis, and we're happy that you were with us this evening. And now about next Oh, oh let me tell about that. Next Thursday, the Hallmark Playhouse will present your own fine story, Random Harvest, starring that charming actress, Joan Fontaine. Well, thank you, Louise. And the Thursday after that, we'll present Edna Ferber's famous story, So Big, starring Virginia Bruce. And the following Thursday, Barclay Square, starring Van Heflin. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was written for radio by Jean Holloway. So until next Thursday then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Random Harvest starring Joan Fontaine and the following week Edna Ferber So Big starring Virginia Bruce. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.